Well, good morning and welcome back to my channel. I thought I'd do a, a little update about the um, the joy of growing things that um, really come into their own uh, in the autumn. Um, I know a lot of people, and myself included, um, really suffer with um, low mood as the as the seasons progress. Um, I must say, not so much as I've got older, because I've started to really enjoy the autumn colours, and particularly since I got into gardening much more, um, I really do enjoy the turning of the seasons. But once the light starts to fade and the days get shorter, I think everybody now is looking for something to lift their spirits, for us, particularly in the morning when you get up. I think. Um, there's now a general consensus of opinion amongst medical professionals um, that getting sunlight in the morning is really important for health and sleep especially and um, I think it's really nice to come out in the garden in the morning especially as the seasons go on to try and, and um, have something positive and uplifting even if you've just got a small windowsill or um, or just a, a very tiny patch of garden. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, a lot. But what I've been trying to do is try and pick plants that I know are going to go on through the season, particularly if they say this could flower up till December. In actual fact, many of them don't, but it's something to aim for. I think in the summertime, um, we all feel uplifted because there's lots of beautiful places to go and we can go to local parks and a lot of the time these are really lovely at the height of the season um, and they do a really good job as well with autumn and spring planting but I think sometimes in the darkest days of November um, it can be very very miserable and just to have some colour to look at when, especially when you come out of the door first thing in the morning um, and just to have that sense of peace of something that really lifts your spirits so that's really what this little video is about i'm going to do it in two parts firstly i'm going to talk about the sort of plants that i would recommend you have a look at and then i'm going to do another video uh, possibly tomorrow which will actually show you some of these plants um, in my garden this is an ongoing thing. I, I can't pretend to be an expert at it. I'm, I'm just trying to tailor my things in this direction. Um, and, and again, as well, I think having something very early in the season, so February, March, this sort of thing, that hastes the start of, of um, the new seasons of, of life, if you like, is also really good. So I, I guess what I'm saying is trying to minimize that darkness um, that when everything is asleep I think it's lovely and I think it's restful particularly if you're a gardener because you you get that time off mowing and the time off weeding and, and so on but I think it's it can also be quite um, quite low because you you know that you've got this long period of darkness which some people do find a, a little bit miserable so these are my ideas that I've been doing um, so I'll start off with my utter favorite I'm actually sitting in it at the moment um, you can probably see it floating around in the background this is cosmos variety purity and I absolutely love this because I grow it every year from seed um, you can also buy the plants from Sarah Raven as well and from many garden centers and when you buy them you really won't think that there's much to them they, they sort of turn up um, if you buy them quite small if you grow them from seed they te seem to take a long time to get going um, because of course they're not frost hardy so if you grow them from seed you will need a, a cold frame or a greenhouse to start them off um, but as the season progresses I would say these come into their own and they get better and better and better every day I mean this is September and behind me I'll show you more tomorrow when I do um, when I do the video about the actual plants but these are just amazing and they as long as you deadhead them you can expect these to go right through to the first frost 
And if you can protect them with something like a, a lightweight fleece, you might even extend the period into December if you're in the south of England as I am. Um, another plant I really like is Hellenium um, Lemon Queen, which I'll also show you tomorrow. That's in a different part of my garden. It's a very tall yellow daisy, um, which flowers probably August to September time to start with. But as long as you dehead that, um, you, you will find it, it, that carries on until November as well. You can even give it a massive haircut and it will all come up again. In fact, that's what they do in my local park. And again, that's loved by bees and uh, all pollinating insects. So I think that's another thing that really um, lifts my spirits, I think, to, to see these perennials, which, um, which really are um, very, very long lasting is what, what I would say. Um, another thing I really like planting are wildflower meadows. And I, one of my favorites is Sarah Raven's Meadow for Birds, not least because that has a season in its own right. Um, it starts off, um, sorry, my dog's barking. I shall just have to, maybe I'll go and get her. Just hang on a minute. Here we go. She doesn't like being left out. Um, she's feeling a little bit lost actually because I managed to get out to a concert last night, which was wonderful. But she's not. Um, she's not too happy because she's been left on her own till late at night. Um, yes, what I was saying was that if you can get something that will flower, um, like like Sarah Raven's Meadow for birds, what I tend to do with that is. Um, I've already sown it last year and it's done very, very well. Um, and there are some gaps developing in it. So I will put more seeds down. And the beauty of that particular mix is it has a lot of um, wildflower meadow uh, seeds in it, including actually last year, there was a lot of wallflowers which started flowering probably October, November and actually flowered all through the winter. So that's a really, really good one. Um, and the other thing about wildflower meadows is they come, they have their own, almost their own agenda. I mean, I'm looking at one at the moment in the background that I can see, um, and it's got field poppies flowering. And they did flower earlier this year, um, but now they seem to be flowering again, and that's fantastic. Um, I've also got another um, Sarah Raven meadow, which is well past its best, but it's still sending up wonderful cosmos flowers. Um, and the other thing is, I've noticed today, this is only mid-September, one of my primroses is starting to flower. One of my polyanthus, um, I noticed, was flowering, um, so that's nice. Um, if you can plant apple trees, again, these are wonderful, particularly the varieties where the apples stay on the tree for a long period of time. So um, things like Granny Smith's, um, apple trees that are more like Discovery, for example, where you have to pick them in August and that's pretty much it. You probably want to, you know, they're nice, but they don't fulfill this purpose, if you see what I mean. It's, it's lovely to go out in January and pick an apple, um, like a Granny Smith's. Um, geraniums are another lovely one. They they survive well into uh, the frost. Um, any kind of geranium, I like the white ones particularly, uh, they can flower. English, um, English chrysanthemums are fantastic. I really, really love those old English chrysanthemums. They will flower um, right up to the frost and sometimes beyond. They, they take lovely haircuts. Um, you can go along and just chop the whole lot off or you can individually dehead them and they come back. Um, that, they're great. Um, what else that's really lifting my spirits? Um, I think anything really that is just carrying on doing its thing. I mean, I've even been going around picking the odd strawberry. You know, some of my varieties of strawberries, it, not even the late ones have been sending out runners and they seem to have been producing fruit, so that's nice. You know, you, you've got your late, late um, flowering uh, tomatoes. Some of those are ripening now as well. Um, and I think, you know, it, it isn't really that difficult to extend the season. As long as you are 
trying to choose the things that you know will actually um, carry on for you. I, th I think that's the thing. So I'm trying to move away from flowers that I absolutely love, like Mesembryanthem, those lovely um, daisy-like flowers. I love them, but they're May and June and all over. I, I'm, I absolutely love um, the Cistus, the Rock Rose, but again, this is not going to flower all year for you. And um, just, I think it's important that we do think about this period of time when the dark days are coming and it's just lovely to come outside and, and see something that just lifts your spirits. So I, I think that's really what I'm trying to say. Um, what else? I'm just trying to think if there's anything else that, um, I've got some late figs coming on, they're lovely, but of course they're not very colourful. Um, I think other things that are really nice are hibiscus. You can you can get those in garden centres. They're, those, they're really beautiful. They have lovely large flowers. They flower later in the season, um, more like September time. Uh, pers persimmon, they, they're very good. Uh, penstemon, sorry, not persimmon, penstemon. They're very good. They'll carry on for you for a long time. There's do fuchsias as well. I don't tend to have fuchsias in the garden because I've got probably the wrong planting scheme for those because I've got much more of a wildflower garden and perhaps they would would suit. Um, I think that's probably all really. So I think tomorrow I'll, um, I'll take you on a little tour and show you some of these things um, that are actually flowering um, and, and then you can see what, what sort of things I mean. I mean it's an ongoing thing I'm collecting stuff all the time. I'm trying to do more and more research to find things for this reason, um, because it is just so uplifting. And, um, and I think it's, it's wonderful to have that gap being bridged. Um, the Victoriana Nurseries, which is one of my favorite places to buy plants, is really, really lovely. And they do have a lot of old English um, varieties of flowers you can buy very inexpensively. And they, they will tell you when they flower, which is lovely as well. So quite a few of those I would recommend. Um, I bought one, I bought some the other day called Pask Flowers, I think they are. They flower at Easter, so I'm looking forward to seeing those. And again, you know, they're, they're not a lot of money. They're very, very good value there, but you do have to have a little bit of patience because they will arrive quite small. Um, I planted a winter flowering calendula seed which I've never tried before. That's going to be interesting. And I'm trying to pad out some of my wildflower meadows with some um, seeds that, like cornflowers and oxide daisies that are quite happily planted at this time of year. Um, and in fact, they will flower earlier next year if you do that. So that's another thing that's nice to do. So I think that's probably, um, Winter flowering pansies as well, they're very lovely. Um, I do like those. Uh, violas, things like that. Um, but certainly, you know, if you get your long flowering perennials, you can certainly extend. And that's one of the things I'm going to do. I'll, I'll come back and show you what the garden looks like um, in October and November. So you can see if I've had any success, because um, I suppose it depends a lot on the weather. But um, I think my favourite is still what's behind me. Um, you know, this lovely daisy here. I don't know if you can see it. I might have to just move the camera slightly just so you can see what I'm talking about. But this really is my, my dream. Absolutely lovely. So, um, so I'll leave it there. Um, it's goodbye from me, from my Essex garden and goodbye from Pebbles who wanted to be in the video. So bye for now.